Sled Trails is sponsored by Shell Canada Products, Smith Optics, and HMK Snowmobiling. Welcome to Sled Trails. I'm Brad Ewan. Here we are at Willerton Skidoo in Wainwright, Alberta. But first, let's cross the border to Beaver Creek Lodge in McBride, British Columbia, and hook up with the Ride and Hide Posse, a little inside thing. Chicka boom! My name is Denise Youngen. I'm with Ride and Hide Recreation in McBride, BC. We've got the mountains, we've got all kinds of riding, we've got family riding, we've got anything from beginner to extreme, all different kinds of terrain. Um, the town here actually does cater to snowmobilers in the winter. So if you come here, you can be well taken care of. We have some of the finest riders around. Uh, Matt Elliott, for instance, winning Jackson Hole, and Jackson Hole is the world. And this is where they learn, this is where they cut their teeth, is in the mountains in the pride. And all the kids around here, most of them, they start out coming up Lucille and Bill and work their way to the Ranshaw, which is a huge, huge area. It's one of the largest areas in uh, North America. Hello, I'm Paul Owen from the McBride Big Country Snowmobile Association. This cabin was built by volunteers about seven years ago, and it's maintained by volunteers. Uh, come and clean up every year. It's available for anybody to use. We hope that they look after it and appreciate it. One fella left a note in there that this, this cabin saved his life. He was stuck and found the cabin. And, I guess the search and rescue came found them right here. So Via Rail train station is right in McBride and there's also a beautiful gallery there called the Sistock Gallery. So with Via Rail it's a fairly inexpensive way to go and they've got special rates over the winter. And you can get an overnighter if you decide you want to go snowmobiling for just a day. So you can stay at Beaver Creek Lodge. Those are like the nicest beds around, nice pillow top beds. And Jill and Stuart are the best hosts ever. Well, people come here when they want a rental. Usually they phone ahead and they ask what is a good area to go to. Uh, actually, even if they're not renting, they still phone ahead, which is a good idea. Find out if their machine is capable of uh, navigating the train that we have here. And if not, maybe we can offer them a rental instead. And we find out what their skill level is, and uh, most of them lie. <laughs> so, so we kind of pick something in between and make sure that they're going to be safe. We can usually hook you up with a local, so you, you've got some, somebody to show you around a little bit. We get people to check in also with us. So if they don't have anyone that they know in town, they can check in with us, and if they don't come back in time, we will send the crew out looking. Season begins as soon as there's enough snow on the ground. <laughs> your skis aren't going to get ratched. 
So it's usually soon, you know, about a foot of snow on the ground or, or packed in about a foot. And then we're usually just going up the hill. And uh, the season extends into June. Some guys still are going up in July. We just start pouring the snow up the mountain until it gets too mucky and then we stop. Well, you got a good idea of what we've got for snow right on the roof here. I'm, I'm amazed that that roof hasn't caved in already. But, uh, and that's compacted. We've got anywhere from 10 to 15 feet right now. And this is the end of March. So we've got a really long season this year. I'm thinking July. I'll still be going up. Maybe for my birthday, we'll go sledding. Who knows? <laughs> Like we could go out today till seven easily and get down the hill and still have enough light to tie the machines up to load up. So if you head out at even 5:30 in the morning, it's already lightening up. You can have yourself a really, really long day. Not that you'd be able to walk after, but <laughs> you'd have a lot of fun. Welcome back to Sled Trails. Check out the BCSF Racing Snowcross Division. But first, let's check in with the Canadian Avalanche Centre for a safety tip. My name is Alan Jones. I'm a public avalanche forecaster with the Canadian Avalanche Centre. So I'm one of the guys that uh, writes bulletins and does public avalanche information and education. The way we put together our avalanche bulletins is we get information from a variety of sources. Uh, there's about 90 different operations, professional operations out there that are in the mountains every day. So things like uh, ski hills, uh, highways forecasters, heli ski operations, uh, backcountry snowmobile operations, and on a daily basis we get information from these op operations. So we take this information, we also add on um, lots of observations we get from public, we pull it all together, and then we take the weather uh, for the next few days and we need to project that onto the current conditions to figure out what the avalanche conditions are going to be like for the next few days. People can take this information then and uh, plan their next few days in the mountains um, know what areas are good to be in, what areas they need to avoid, and uh, the ways they can stay safe in the mountains. This map just shows the southwest British Columbia and Alberta, and all these sort of areas that are highlighted are areas that we're providing some sort of avalanche forecast for, right from the northwest, south coast, all the Columbia Mountains, northern Rockies, and the southern, southern Rockies. Um, over here are two of our new regions. The Bighorn is um, down by the Nordag area, and we're doing a once-weekly report. And we've extended our South Rockies region now over towards Crow's Nest Pass, Fincher Creek, and Blairmore area. And that's a three times a week report for this season. We have to understand these are very large forecast regions, so they're very, uh, very general um, regions. Um, the advice isn't specific to a particular slope, it's to a particular region. So the Canadian Avalanche Centre, we're a not-for-profit uh, group, and we're here to provide public avalanche safety um, information and services. So Things like our bulletins, um, they're available to the, the public for free. We also have, uh, so they can come to our website to get this information. They can call up our 1-800 number, uh, toll-free number. Or they can, um, three times a week, they can get our bulletins emailed directly to their inbox. And all of these things we offer um, at no charge to the public. And uh, they're definitely going to help people uh, avoid avalanches in the first place. And then it's up to the people to get the right training and carry the right equipment so that they're... Um, they're staying safe and they're in the mountains. I think that, uh, you know, the grooming has been phenomenal that, you know, Sun Peaks has done. Um, you know, obviously all the volunteers are just absolutely key. I'm the official flagman and I, and I run the races along with a team of uh, five other people from the BCSF Racing Division. And I'll always know that we'll never part cause you reflect on me. And, uh, you know, the weather's been absolutely dope all weekend, so really we can't complain. 
So we've been hanging out all weekend, having a great time. You know, riders from all over Canada, the U.S. You know, it's absolutely a huge event. Expert A, title sponsor, Molson Canadian. You know, certainly without all these sponsors, you know, you know Leading Edge, RTR. Um, you know, these guys are, are integral for bringing events of this nature. So what's happening now is um, we're just getting ready to go for the last few rounds, mm -hmm. running up the uh, the uh, the next categories are pro pro mods, and it's gonna get really crazy. You can see some crazy crazy air in the next little while. Oh, it's great. It's just like motocross on the snow. So it's uh, it's really good. There's uh, a lot of air, a lot of jumps, a lot of spills. It's good. It was going good. Just hit the corner rock. I just shouldn't give enough gas. Let off too soon. Stress is unbearable, man. Yeah, I'm lucky to be have a have a pulse right now. <laughs> Welcome back to Sled Trails. I'm Bruce Willerton. I'm here to give you some tips that will help mountain riders. Your carburetors here are heated by antifreeze out of the motor and in, in that minus 10 and lower they should be turned on so it keeps the ice out of the out of the carb and the snow melted in the intake and uh, ap after it's 10 above you turn them off and then you just turn the valve sideways you get lots of uh, makes the motor produce better and no icing up and besides that you should also have gas line antifreeze in your gas tank at all times the desk system is our shutoff system and it's a chip in here that keeps people from stealing the sleds. They can't run without them. And uh, if they get moisture in them when they put them back on, it'll uh, take one cylinder, won't run. You just keep a, it good and dry like that and then snap it on. And we try and oblige the customer and help them all the time. And uh, we, don't, we don't win them all, but we sure try. Hi, I'm uh, Ken Forbes from Keystone Machine in Rebel Soap. Uh, today we're going to talk about some aftermarket goodies that we can uh, put on our snowmobiles to uh, increase our performance and, uh, and actually even make them look a little better. You know, in, in, the, in the dawn of start of time and snowmobiling, uh, everybody used to sit down and, uh, you know, they're sitting on the seat all the time just burning down the trail. But, uh, you know, now free riding, you know, we're out there ripping up the pow and, and uh, we're, we're, everybody's finding that the taller you can stand up, the, the better you can maneuver the snowmobile. But what I've done originally is I, I brought some of my handlebar rise out of the bar riser itself and then I run quite a tall handlebar. And, and now what I'm going to go with is quite a bit longer bar riser and then a flat bar. I'm going to still achieve the same sort of handlebar rise in the beginning, but I'm just going to go with this flatter bar. This, this particular handlebar riser is made by Mahler. Um, it's a Canadian canoe company from Vancouver. They're, they're, you know, they're really quite beefy in the, in the center beam here, and then they have a, quite a wide perch area, and you can really clamp the handlebar down. He'll actually custom etch uh, whatever you want put into these. Uh, I like the skulls. Other people like skulls. Skulls are cool. <laughs> Aftermarket parts are cool. <laughs> Up next on Sled Trails, we got some home footage from our good friend Tom in Montana, and followed by a great friend by Corey Tormash called Ex-Con Freeriders.
from up here it looks like the top of the world the light strung out below like a million little fireflies I watch the smoke from the smoke stacks curl see the reflection from the city lights in your eyes you were right and I was wrong I never thought love would last this long so amazing the way you hold me now I want to set you free love is what holds us down think you're on top of the world but your world is tumbling down oh you give your heart away and I From up here it looks like the top of the world I can see everything as if I were a bird Star strung above like a string of pearls The picture that we've painted here is worth far more than a thousand words I was wrong and you were right Right now my heart is overwhelmed with delight Oh, it's crazy that this could be Now I want to set you free Love is what holds us down Think you're on top of the world But your world is tumbling down Oh, you give your heart away And I want Take it off any sweet jumps.
Special thanks to everybody in Wainwright, Alberta, the wicked backcountry McBride, Sled Trails. We'll see you next week. Sled Trails is sponsored by Shell Canada Products, Smith Optics, and HMK Snowmobiling. Look us up online, key search word, sled trails.